<laughs> okay. Good. Well, um, what time is it? Okay, 6 or 3. Uh, 6 3. 6 or 3. Well, let's uh, just begin for today and then whoever wants to join can join. And uh, welcome. It's good to see you all. And uh, or not see you, but that's your present. We we know your presence, so that's good. And um, so today we um, will do the same schedule as usual: half an hour of loving kindness guided meditation, and then we'll I'll continue uh, last. Uh, last Thursday's talk that I couldn't finish because I was taking too long <laughs> and um, which was about happy samadhi which is uh, happy meditation the happy clarity of mind and uh, wise practice or wise effort and mindfulness and the four today will be the four different levels of meditation and so, for now, you can simply take a position in which you feel comfortable. You can sit, sit back and relax if you want. Or any, any position that, that you feel good in and that you feel at ease and relaxed. And you can close your eyes. And whatever happened today, simply let it go. Let it fade away in the background. Whatever your dominant mental state was for the day, if there was one, or if there was something on your mind today, just allow yourself to clean up the slate and simply relax. Relax and bring up a smile. It doesn't have to be a big smile. Simply a Buddha smile. A smile of contentment. And relax any tension any tightness in your body and in your mind. Simply let it all go. And enjoy the relaxation with a smile. Simply be happy, be grateful for this little bit of time you have right now for your own self to relax, to allow some space for happiness and contentment. You might notice that as you let go of any mental flow, anything that was into your mind previously, and settle into this present awareness, you might notice that you feel your body quite clearly. Simply relax and rest your mind into this very clear and gentle awareness of your own body.
with a smile. If the mind is a little restless at first, simply keep relaxing, keep letting go, and keep enjoying the relief that comes from letting go and relaxing. Simply allowing space, preparing the grounds for mental clarity and mental ease. Whenever you feel is appropriate for you, bring up this warm, radiant feeling of loving kindness inside your chest, within your heart. And if you can, simply allow it to suffuse and drench your entire body. This feeling of universal love, or simply just love, is very similar, very close to the feeling of happiness. If you have some difficulties bringing it up, you can remember good actions that you've done in the past, when you've helped someone, when you gave something to someone that really needed it, when you helped someone become happier. a good deed that you've done.
perhaps what might help you bring up the feeling is thinking of holding a puppy or a kitten or a baby goat or any little animal that evokes this feeling for you. It is a very physical feeling. It is a very tangible. This soft tenderness inside your chest. It might even be a tingling sensation. It might be like someone brushing a feather on your heart. And even if the mind is a little agitated, goes here and there, thinks about this and that, simply continue relaxing, continue letting go, not holding on to any thought in particular, but really cultivating, kindling, this beautiful, warm, glowing feeling inside your chest, spreading inside your whole body. And enjoying it, taking delight in it. This is one of the highest and most blameless kind of happiness that humans can experience. If you've done something you're not really proud of, simply forgive yourself. We all make mistakes. Allow yourself to be kind to yourself here and now. Take the determination not to do mistakes again or this particular mistake and then move on and forgive yourself and bring up this feeling of love inside your chest with a smile
If anyone has done you wrong at any point this week or in the past, and it is bothering you right now, remember that all living beings, wherever they are, whoever they are, there is one universal truth is that we all want to be happy. And remember that these people too only want to be happy. And sometimes we make mistakes. Other people make mistakes. And so simply forgive them. Send them your loving kindness. Remember that they also want to be happy. And let it go, relax, and come back with a smile. and enjoy the happiness that comes from this beautiful feeling of love. Fill your entire body and mind with it. you might notice that this feeling naturally wants to grow. In fact, the feeling of love is doesn't do very well when it's contained. It simply wants to expand. And so allow it to. Allow it to expand everywhere above you and below you. Simply love. In front of you and behind you. Love. To your left and to your right. love to all living beings in all directions without any exception For no reason, without any condition, 
no because just love unbounded unrestricted And never underestimate the power of this kind of meditation. Boundless love is one of the highest, purest mental states we can live in. It is always appropriate always timely If the mind wonders, thinks about this, thinks about that, now start noticing the slight tension that this brings inside your head or perhaps inside your body. And as soon as you notice a distraction has arisen and you feel this slight tension, simply let it go and relax. Notice the relief. Smile and come back to the loving kindness, unbounded. measureless the mind is easily distracted it doesn't matter what matters is that you continue noticing letting go and relaxing and bringing up and maintaining the feeling of loving kindness as much as you can.
remember not to think about the feeling, but feel the feeling. This is a feeling meditation. The mind might try to think or analyze the feeling, but this is just a distraction. Notice the tension, let it go, relax. Come back to feeling the feeling of love. That is how there is true development. through cultivation of loving-kindness. Iti piso bhagavara ham samma sambuddho Vija charana sampanno sugato loka vidu Anuttaro purisadam sarati Satta deva manusanam buddho bhagavati Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditiko Akaliko Eipasiko Panayiko Pachatangwaritabo Nyuhiti Supati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ujupati Panno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Nyaya pati panno bhagavato savaka sango Sami chi pati panno bhagavato savaka sango Yadidang chattari purisa yugani atta purisa pugala Esa bhagavato savaka sango Ahuneyo, Pahuneyo, Dakineyo, Anjalikaraniyo, Enutherang Punya Ketang Lokasati Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. For those who wonder what this chant is, is the homage to the qualities of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Maybe in one talk I will go in greater detail and explain them. But for now, mm. I have to stick to the program because I tend to take it a little bit longer. <laughs> and so, I invite you to bring this beautiful feeling that you've cultivated for about half an hour and not necessarily to let it go and fade away in the background, but you can uh, bring it into your, your present moment, uh, listening with the feeling of loving-kindness is definitely possible. 
and in fact is really helpful. And I will um, go into the second part that I could not finish last time um, about happy samadhi, the meditation of happiness, the mental collectedness with happiness. And so last time um, we sp I spoke briefly about the samadhi, the meditation section of the Eightfold Path, which is constituted of wise practice uh, or translated sometimes as right effort, then wise mindfulness, and then wise samadhi, wise meditation or mental collectedness. And uh, we covered a little bit uh, wise practice, effort, and wise mindfulness. We saw that um, mindfulness is not the practice, but a result from the practice. And that um, right effort or wise practice is constituted of four aspects four folds, which are the first is to prevent any unwholesome states like anger to arise at any of the sense doors, which means being aware simply of the Buddha called this the uh, mindfulness of the body and simply being mindful at every of the sense doors so that we do not uh, get too attached to <laughs> our own um, preferences and uh, the way we want things to be <laughs> and always remi remember to relax and to make sure that uh, anger doesn't arise because of any of the sense doors and then the second fold is to abandon any states that have perhaps arisen then that means it's uh, already a little too late <laughs> and uh, perhaps anger arose but then there is still this uh, this path that uh, the, that the wise cultivate is to always letting go relaxing and seeing the anger comes with tension and all these unwholesome states they always come with tension and to release, let go, relax, and not take things so personal, and allow them to, to pass on and to understand that with wisdom, that anger is not for our own happiness, and to let it go. And then the second, uh, the third part of right effort is to bring up something wholesome. Now there's a few variations here, but um, mainly it is in this particular uh, moment and topic uh, is bringing up loving-kindness or any wholesome states uh, closely related to this joy or compassion and then the fourth fold is to maintain and try to cultivate and bring to fruition these very wonderful and wholesome states which carry mindfulness within them now mindfulness comes with wholesome states like loving kindness. Loving kindness is a state that is aware naturally because that is the Dhamma, that is the nature of loving kindness is to be aware. It's impossible to be caring and careless. <laughs> so these states come, come together. But now before I continue too long on the topic of loving kindness as I tend to. Um, I will continue uh, with um, the, the loving kindness instructions as the Buddha gave them and then flow right into the four levels of meditation that he usually taught. And so he starts, then this virtuous seeker, void of longing, void of impatience, void of arrogance, fully conscious and continually present, 
meditates with a heart filled with love, suffusing one direction, the second, the third, and the fourth, above, below, and everywhere across, to all living beings in this boundless universe. One meditates with a heart filled with love, vast, expansive, measureless, free from anger and impatience. Then he gives this beautiful simile of a conch blower. Imagine a mighty conch blower who could effortlessly let his sound be known to the four directions. In the same way, when the release of mind by universal love is developed and cultivated, any selfish mental state previously acquired cannot settle here. None can stay. And this is the real beauty of loving kindness is, as I was saying, when there is loving kindness and especially boundless love for all living beings in all directions, no unwholesome karma, no unwholesome mental state can stick they all have to slip and fall and fade away because the loving kindness takes over. And for a brief moment in time, we have a very, very pure mind, very wholesome mind. Then real realizing that these five hindrances have been abandoned within him, gladness is born. Now, loving kindness is also a way to abandon the, the hindrances. From that gladness, bliss arises in his mind. Because of one's mind is blissful, one's body becomes relaxed. Because one's body is relaxed, one experiences happiness. And from this happiness, the mind goes into samadhi or becomes clear and collected. This is what we call meditation. Now the first level of meditation, letting go of all outward, all outward desires and letting go of unwholesome mental states. So basically this means simply putting aside everything that we're holding on to in the world right now or any anger, the unwholesome states, any hindrance, we just let it go, relax. Still attended by thinking and imagining this means that in this level, there is still a bit of thinking, but the thinking is wholesome. It's thinking of a friend that you really like. It's thinking of a puppy, maybe. It's maybe thinking about uh, picturing love for all living beings. In the first level of meditation, there is still thinking and imagining. With the blissful happiness born of letting go, now every time we let go of the hindrances, there is a slight relief that comes. And this is truly blissful. And as we learn to cultivate this path, we learn to really notice this relief and take delight in it. And it becomes a real pleasure. One understands and abides in the first level of meditation. One immerses, permeates, suffuses, and pervades one's body with, his bliss, with this blissful happiness born of letting go. And nowhere in his entire body is left untouched by this blissful happiness born of letting go. Imagine a skilled soap maker who would throw some soap powder into a copper bowl. He would sprinkle it with water here and there and knead it thoroughly. Then after some time the lump of soap would be filled and suffused by moisture through and through everywhere touched by the moisture yet it would not leak. This is talking about the feeling is completely suffused in the body but the mind is not leaking outwards. In the same way one immerses, permeates, suffuses and pervades one's body with this blissful happiness born of letting go. This is quite clear instructions. <laughs> and nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this blissful happiness born of letting go. Now you notice that the words blissful happiness come back quite a bit. So 
It's probably important. <laughs> this is a visible fruit of the truth-seeking life, beyond this and more exalted than the previous ones. The second stage of meditation. With the calming of thinking and imagination, with inner tranquilization, one's mind becomes unified without thinking and imagination. With the blissful happiness born of samadhi, the blissful happiness that comes from mental collectedness. Now, at this point, we start realizing that we're uh, starting to understand how to deal with the hindrances. The mind is not, uh, we're not, we're not forcing the mind to stay with one object, but it's simply the result from letting go of the mental wavering, the mental distractions, by simply letting go of the tension as it arises and coming back with the loving kindness. The mind naturally becomes collected. It becomes composed and it becomes very happy. Happiness brings someone into this beautiful collected clarity of mind and this collected clarity of mind also brings someone into happiness. And so this is a revolving cycle. Here the chatter, the inner chatter is fading away. This is also called the noble silence uh, stage. One immerses, permeates, suffuses and pervades one's body with this blissful happiness born of samadhi, the mental collectedness. And nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this blissful happiness born of mental collectedness. Imagine a deep lake with water only welling up from within. This is the feeling of loving kindness. With no other source flowing in from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. As that means there's no other, it's not coming from the world, it's coming from within. And the rain devas would not let out any kind of showers at any time. From that cool water spring gushing from within, that lake would become immersed permeated, suffused and pervaded by this fresh and cool water. And nowhere in this entire lake would be left untouched by this cool spring water. In the same way, one immerses, permeates, suffuses and pervades one's body with this blissful happiness born of samadhi, born of mental clarity so that nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this, by this blissful happiness born of samadhi. This is another visible fruit of the truth-seeking life, great king, beyond this and more exalted than the previous ones. And now the third stage of meditation. With the calming of bliss, a monk abides in mental steadiness, present and fully aware, experiencing happiness with his body, with one's body, a state which the virtuous ones, the awakened ones, describe as steadiness and presence of mind. This is a pleasant abiding. One understands and abides in the third level of meditation. Now at this point, the mind and the body has been drenched in very beautiful happiness and mental calm and it has taken its fill and now what it wants it wants more calm and so Naturally, at this point, it's not something that we really need to do or anything. It will simply happen on its own as we cultivate this joy. When the mind becomes very much filled with joy, the whole body and the mind are suffused with joyful happiness. The more excited component of joy or bliss will start to become more still and even, in fact, better. 
it's not disappearing it's, it's um, simply changing becoming even better <laughs> when immerses permeates suffuse and pervades one's body with that happiness beyond bliss and nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by that happiness beyond bliss and these states what the Buddha is talking about here is mostly related to mindfulness of the body which is fairly similar it's a little bit different maybe I'll cover that in another talk but here this is all experienceable with the loving kindness also it's not only uh, the, the feeling of loving kindness is a very bodily feeling that we also immerse suffuse and pervade in our entire body first because we really do need to physically feel this feeling <laughs> before we can even spread it or share it give it away imagine water lilies indian lotuses and white lotuses some of these water lilies and lotuses are born in the water grown in the water not risen above the water nourished while while completely immersed from their very tip down to their roots submerged permeated suffused and pervaded by cool water so that no part of those water lilies indian lotuses and white lotuses is left untouched by cool water in the same way one immerses, permeates, suffuses, and pervades one's body with that happiness beyond bliss. And nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this happiness beyond bliss. This is yet another visible fruit of the truth-seeking life, great king, beyond this and more exalted than the previous one. Now the fourth level of meditation. Leaving behind happiness and unhappiness with the settling of mental gladness and affliction with neither pain nor pleasure purified by unmoving presence one understands and abides in the fourth level of meditation. Now these, these gross concepts of even good and bad, happy, unhappy, are even fading away because the mind is so happy and still and steady that simply having a concept arising like this is a little too coarse. <laughs> and so it simply wants to be completely free of anything and enjoy this beautiful open clarity one sits with one's body suffused with bright purity of one's own spotless mind and nowhere in one's own body is left untouched by this bright purity of one's spotless mind Imagine a man was sitting wrapped up to the head with a sparkling white cloth so that nowhere on his entire body would be left untouched by this sparkling white cloth. In the same way one sits with one's body suffused with that bright purity of one's own spotless mind. And nowhere in one's entire body is left untouched by this bright purity of one's spotless mind. all right and so at the fourth level uh, of meditation what happens through these four levels is that uh, as we move on quite naturally through these levels we don't necessarily have to uh, do anything about it if we simply um, make sure that we maintain the loving kindness and every time there's a distraction we see the tension we release relax 
let go and come back with a smile to the loving kindness. This is all we really need to know to do. <laughs> now these four stages are more like a roadmap of what will happen as you go on and practice like this. And what is good to know is that we not necessarily want to be too attached to any kind of particular uh, strength of the feeling of loving kindness itself. Now the feeling at the beginning might be coarse a little bit because uh, uh, the mind needs a bit of a coarser kind of tangible feeling <laughs> to really know that it's there and to become established again. But as we cultivate it and as the feeling uh, becomes more established, the mind will settle down. The distractions become further apart. And slowly we have these beautiful things happening, like these, this blissful joy and happiness simply arising, simply from the letting go of the hindrances. It is the Dhamma that a mind rid of hindrances is naturally happy. We don't really have to wish for it to be happy when we let go of the hindrances. The mind simply becomes happy on its own. It knows what to do. <laughs> and the loving kindness at the beginning will be a little bit coarser and that is wonderful, that is great. And then as we move along it it might you might notice that it starts it's not as excited as it was in the beginning but it is more established and it is more uh, permanent it requires less effort to maintain it simply stays for longer and this also you will notice uh, that it's being cultivated and established as we sit, but the more often we practice in this way, the more it will simply follow along into everything that we do. And the easier it will be to simply go back to this very wonderful feeling in, in everything that we do and experience love uh, and compassion welling up very easily and so we are training our hearts and minds to become better and more loving, more accepting, more forgiving. And we're especially learning how, how the mind works and how to experience this wonderful happiness that isn't dependent Thing on anything in the world simply welling up from within. I think I, I might have one, two minutes for questions. <laughs> Does anybody have any question? But I have one question. Yes. When you said the love and kindness becomes coarse, does that mean that uh, your mind keeps on jumping from one thought to another? Or is it um, like a continuous life, love and kindness level altogether? More like, uh, like a strength in the quality of the feeling. Like it will be at the beginning, you might need it to be more strong, you know, uh, like a, a fully blazing fire, <laughs> like really strong because your mind is, uh, tends to be distracted easily, like you're saying. And so, um, at, and, and also at the beginning, uh, sometimes, you know, we, we do our things uh, in, during the day. Sometimes we're 
mindfulness slips a little bit and we we are we drag into these uh, more like automatic states of mind and um, to really break away from these automatic reactions or automatic mind goings uh, sometimes we need a bit of a stronger loving kindness feeling at the beginning so that our mind can really feel it and it's really tangible and it's really embodied also and then as this feeling uh, it, but if, if someone holds on to this, uh, this really strong feeling, uh, this becomes a kind of a forced, uh, it becomes kind of a, f it becomes a hindrance in itself if there is no allowing it to fade after a while or af after, um, some people might uh, try too hard try too hard to really make it <laughs> strong all the time, which is not a bad thing either, but um, it, it might become uh, uh, a bit more difficult. And uh, it, it's good to know that uh, during the meditation, maybe after half an hour, the feeling will start to stick a little bit more. And, in fact, we do, we do want to allow it to fade a little bit and become more established. I hope that answered your, your question. <laughs> okay, sadhu, sadhu. Good. Okay, any question? Other? Good. Bhante, yes. could you talk about the difference between loving kindness and that feeling and the feeling of love that we just have for the people that we already love so much is there a difference it's very very similar um but the feeling of um so the, the, this feeling that we have for someone is uh is contained or it's uh it's channeled into this one person or which i mean it, that that is wonderful and that is great that there's no uh there's very little difference i i would say though that uh to compare it it would be like uh, comparing it to uh, maybe a flower that's just budding or uh, that's just you see just one these you see the beauty just one in one little place here it's just there but the loving kindness in the meditation that we're practicing and that the Buddha taught is like a uh, full bloom <laughs> and so there's no there's no uh, restriction it's completely open there's no um, and and this kind of loving kindness that is fully open also supports this kind of um, also lo love that we have for loved ones and in fact we just uh, we simply slowly start to understand how this feeling works how the mind works and how it can be fully mature so that this feeling can in fact feed the love that we already have for the people that we already love and also has a chance to open up and be uh, not only contingent to a fistful of people but to all living beings around us and this this the buddha in fact said that uh, to 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 have love to experience love and uh, loving kindness for someone in particular is very wholesome uh, and but to develop loving kindness for all living beings in all directions is 
some of the highest merit that a human being can do in his lifetime. So it's also good to know. <laughs> does that does that answer your question, Marty? Okay, good. Sadhu, sadhu. But there. Yes. I do have. Oh, astronaut. Uh, Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, so when we already love the people we love, we usually have expectations from them, <laughs> from the people we love. So that's where we run into trouble. So, mm -hmm. so when you um, love unboundly or unconditionally, uh, I think that expe expectation cannot be there. So that's how it is. Right, Bante? Yes, exactly. Yes. Well... This is some wise words and I can only agree and to have uh, this feeling of love for the people that we love is truly wonderful uh, but sometimes it comes with other things <laughs> and that's where the trick is <laughs> and then, when the other things um, shows up Sutta in the Sungadova, the Sutra, mm -hmm. uh, Sutta, Buddha has explained how that works, and that, that's a whole different uh, topic uh, that Bhante will have to spend another an hour with, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Sadhu, 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 sadhu. Good. Yes, that the the mind is a yes, yes, it's tricky, and that's why loving kindness to all living beings is is such a wholesome thing to develop because um, um, we tend to only look at things in uh, in the close-up view <laughs> and uh, sometimes that doesn't allow us to see the whole field of of perception of what's really happening and uh, to develop this really broad, expansive awareness is truly, in fact, also the, the, the Buddhist teaching on opening up the mind and um, allowing a clear, bright and open awareness and also continuously practicing in this way, we start to see the little tendencies in the mind that lie behind these these uh, these habits that we have sometimes, and so this is uh, another reason, well, uh, why to develop the mind in this way and to grow and and in fact this is simply to grow into more love and more compassion and so that we can in fact be an even better generator of love, loving kindness for the people around us. And, all right, is there any uh, question left? <laughs> oh, let's hear it, Gray. What does happiness mean? Well, that's why it is such a good meditation because we're really learning to feel the feeling of happiness. Because happiness is really something that you can feel. Feel within your yourself, within your body. Do you sometimes feel happy when you go play outside? How does it feel inside? <laughs> it's like this woohoo feeling, right? <laughs> Do you smile sometimes, Gray? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you I'm sure you smile and I'm sure you laugh quite a lot. You smile and laugh? <laughs> yes. Smile like what what happened? Spot is telling you right now, honey. Smile like what happened? 
Well, when you smile and when you laugh, that's a very good indicator. That's very close to happiness, I would say. It's my humble opinion. Does that make sense? Would, okay. would that work? <laughs> <laughs> good that's your homework for the weekend for the week yeah. is to, to be happy feel feel how it feels when you smile when you laugh when you play that feeling mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a hard one <laughs> good okay well, let's, uh, let's share our merits and then I think that will be it for this week. <laughs> May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving should all grieve and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha sasana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I wish you all a very beautiful, safe week and happy week. Good to see you all. Hi, Joan. And uh, Eugenia also, Grant, Terence, Mama. All right, Namo Buddhaya, you're